Good afternoon. God bless you. Excited to connect with you. Yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. Excited about everything that's going on. And uh, I'm excited about teaching again today. I love to teach. Love to connect with um, the people of God. I think that our purpose in life is to teach, to empower, to equip, to help people to reach their destiny, mm -hmm. fulfill their assignments. Amen. I think that's our uh, assignment in life. And so I'm really committed to doing that, really committed to seeing you uh, fulfill your assignment. And uh, I want to take about, give us about 20 good minutes, 30 minutes maybe. And uh, we're going to take uh, this journey of teaching today. I love, again, I love to teach. I love to make teaching plain. Uh, we've really been on this thought about, again, why, uh, because I think the biggest suddenly that many, most of us have experienced, my wife and I in particular, uh, has been realizing why we were born, why we were recreated, why we What's, what's our purpose in life? You know, when I look at even the prophetic books, I got a book, I got a shelf full of books. And um, when we look at even the, 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 uh, the prophetic books in the Bible, uh, there are five major prophetic books, 12 uh, minor prophetic books. And with those books, each one of them was written uh, to address a certain situation. The minor ones address a specific situation just by itself. And right. then uh, the major ones, uh, the major prophetic books, uh, they span the time from their time all the way through the time of Jesus and uh, other issues. And so, um, wow, Kim KB said that uh, uh, she said uh, that she missed the scope last night, but she watched it three times. <laughs> we love you, Kim. You are so committed and so faithful. And uh, I missed your call the other day. I wasn't uh, really feeling as well as I wanted to that day, but I'm, I'm so much stronger now. And um, so at any rate, I'll, we'll get back with you. You'll you call us or we'll call you uh, sometime today and we'll get together and work things out because I want to mm -hmm. see you committed to your, your success. But anyway, right. I want to take a minute. I want to watch a little bit of this video. Uh, I'm, you know, when I get on something, it, it, I stay on it. So I love to watch these little videos. I want to show a little bit of this one video and uh, I think it'll be a blessing. spread throughout all the eastern provinces. Now before you. There were some in authority who hated the Jews, for they bowed to no man, but worshipped only their God, as did Mordecai. on the counsel of his princes and wise men, for these were dangerous times. For his protection, it was decreed that no one, regardless of the person's position, should approach the king without invitation. They are disloyal to thy bidding and to the decrees of this court. They bow down only to their god and... In the third year of his reign, Ahasuerus was advised to divorce Queen Vashti. After searching throughout all his kingdom in every province, he found a beautiful young woman and married her. And thus was the rise of Queen Esther. To an unseen and unproven God. But is it you would have done, Hannah? If it pleased the king. Let it be written that all the Jews may be destroyed. The king knew not that his new queen, Esther, was a Jew. To destroy, to kill and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, and to take the spoil of them for a prey, 
After Mordecai read the decree and perceived all that was done, he rent his clothes and dressed in sackcloth to mourn with all the Jews. She's a very quiet child, not one to cause trouble. Well, if you just came on, stay focused just a moment. I wanted to show this video because we're talking about for such a yeah. time as this. I really believe that it's paramount uh, and very important to what we're talking Her about. Closest kin? Her father's nephew. Esther is my cousin. The king's officers shall gather together all the fair young women in every province of the kingdom who are of perfect virtue and bring them unto the palace of Shushan. Each will be considered as to her worthiness to be presented to the king who will choose one to be his queen. Last night we showed the video from the Apostle Paul's calling on a Damascus road and we talked about how, um, you know, Paul's life, he was, he literally oh, went He's through the, the challenges that he went through, mm -hmm. but he knew that he couldn't quit because he had not reached the fullness of his destiny. Right. Now check this out. He sounds so sad. Perhaps he's lost something or someone. It must be a Jew, as dressed as a Hebrew. I know you guys are patient. In the king's court. Amon hath won the king's heart and has offered a sum of money for the king's treasuries that he might destroy the Jews. I 
king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever shall come unto the king into the inner court who is not called will be put to death except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter I have not been called to come in unto the king in these 30 days my queen Mordecai giveth this message in return if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time then shall thou and thy father's house be destroyed what doth he mean thy father's house is that all no he hath said also who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this you know, I'm going to stop right there. I, I'm looking at the text from at the book of Esther and um, for chapter, uh, was it chapter four, verse 14, it says, if thou art altogether hold thy peace at this time, then thou, the, there shall, uh, then, then their enlargement and deliverance arise the Jews from another place. But if thou in thy father's house shall be destroyed and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And I, I really believe that as a thought that you were, you were created for something special. I mean, if all of your life, everything you've been through, all of the trials, all the storms, every, every situation, every circumstance that you've had to endure was to prepare you for this day, was to yes. prepare you for this moment in your life, this is your suddenly season. For Absolutely. Esther, this was her suddenly season. This was the time in her life where she had to realize that I was born for this. I right. came into the kingdom. I, yes. I was born. I was God created me. He formed me. He fashioned me. He placed me in the position that I'm in, a place of authority, the place of prominence, the place mm -hmm. of uh, of everything that I'm doing. And he did it for such a time as this. Isn't that amazing? Absolutely. It's, it's so amazing because as I look, um, she was there with her, was it her cousin? Mm -hmm. um, Mordecai is her cousin. And so I have to wonder, okay, what happened to her parents? Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if that, that, that is made clear, but her parents were, was not there to, to, you know, at this point in her life. And one of the things that I realized and what God showed me is that God will give you at least two sets of parents, one to birth you into the earth and the other to birth you into purpose. Mm. And sometimes um, <clears throat> it's not who we think it's going to be. Here it was her cousin. And so he saw something on the inside of her. He, he knew um, and you know that God had greater for her. And so he pushed her. He said, no, this is your time. You've got to go now. And I, you know, I miss you. I'm going to miss you. I know you're going to miss me, but your purpose is greater than where you are right now. You know, and I, I looked at a couple other things. Number one, she's going through calamity mm -hmm. because losing your parents is not an easy thing. It's right. not a, it's not a, it's not a, a fun process to have to mm -hmm. be uh, separated, to be isolated. Mm -hmm. But some of you, in, even in your situation, remember I talked about last night, sometimes we have to realize that it's not uh, just necessarily the stuff that we've been through, but the reason why we went through what yes. we went through, that yes. God has prepositioned you yes. and, and positioned you to be a solution and a global solution is, and the answer to somebody else's problem. Right. You looked at it as, a, as an issue. You looked at it as a Jesus. problem. You looked at it as something negative, but God allowed you to go through what you've gone through, no matter what it is, no matter how devastating it can be. Because somebody might ask the question, God, you mean to tell me that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose, when it means separation, isolation, uh, when it means possible death in the scenario? You remember, it took her courage. Come on. It, it took her courage uh, to, 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 you know, to be able to stand before that. She could have chose the path of fear and said, you know, because initially she was concerned. But Mordecai says, if you altogether hold your peace, yes. how do you know that it was not for this purpose for which you were born? My God. And so sometimes uh, we can we can be Jesus. in that place. And I'm telling you, I really believe that even for many of you that are watching today, that you that, that, that you're in a place, you're in a crucible of faith. You're in a place where you have to, you have to wonder, okay, God, why? 
why was I born? What was my purpose? Yes. What's my destiny? What's the thing that you birthed me out of my mother's womb for? And God says to yes. you today that, that, that the thing that has bothered you the most, the thing that you're most fearful of, the thing that you've tried to run from, the testimony that you've tried my to hide, God. the testimony that you've not wanted to tell anybody is the testimony that's going to literally save somebody's life, that's Jesus. literally going to help somebody. Yes. And the Bible even says uh, that it is uh, that we over, that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Absolutely. Let me tell you something. Yes. Sometimes just sharing your testimony, telling what you've been through is going to be the thing that's going to help deliver you and help somebody yes. else. And it's the thing that's going to produce the greatest amount of uh, the greatest amount of of, of, of of victory for you. Let me let me share this other thing with you very quickly. I think it's going to bless somebody. Yes. Um, each of us has a different assignment in the earth. Everybody has a different purpose. Now, if, if you have just logged on, please share. If you didn't watch the beginning of this video, go back and watch the beginning of it because I'm telling you, I believe it's going to bless you mm -hmm. uh, just the entire message. I told you we're trying to do everything that we can uh, to try to change the, the nature of how we minister to you and how we teach you. And we're doing what we can to build that out even more. Right. Um, but I really believe that in this season uh, that God has given us an even greater idea of why we were born mm -hmm. and what our purpose is in your life, even from yes. social media perspective, uh, from those that we minister to locally, globally, whatever perspective we minister to you from. And uh, I really believe that that's, that's where we're at. We're digging deeper into that, yes. what we want to teach, we want to impart, and we want to use creative means to be able to do that, to do it differently potentially than we've done it in the past. Yes. But we believe that there is a purpose for which you were born, there's a purpose for which you were created, uh, and everything that you've gone through up until this point in your life, Look at this life of this young lady. Isolation, uh, separation, uh, feelings of abandonment, feelings of rejection, uh, having to go into the king's court, having to be amongst all these other people. I'm sure there was competition in there. There were all this other stuff yes. uh, that was going on. Absolutely. But at the same time, there was a significance to her prepositioning. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't understand why you had to go through the divorce, why you had to go through the death, why you had to go through uh, the sickness, why you had to go through all the things that you had to go through, but let me tell you something about it. God, in his infinite wisdom, knows what it takes to push position you and to also birth out of you what needs mm -hmm. to be birthed out of you. Yes. I, I've told some of you again my testimony during Atlanta Suddenly, and uh, for those of you who didn't you get, get it, get the CD, please. You can get the CD, <laughs> it's on our website. Step. And, uh, and it'll share more with you Absolutely. about what we went on, yes. what we went through, and what we what we've endured. But let me say this: everything that I went through, everything that God allowed me to be strong enough to endure, everything that didn't kill me, everything that didn't destroy me, only helped me to be prepared to be the man of God that I am today, and to see the Scripture in the way that I see it. Yes. I may see it totally different than anybody else, and there are so many theologians and so many Bible teachers that are out here. But my way of seeing it is totally different, and the reason is because I have a different set of experiences than anybody else. Jesus. And so your way of seeing things, your way of teaching something, your way of encouraging somebody is going to be totally different because of the fact that you've had to endure a different set of experiences. Now, let me share something else with you that's very interesting. I was watching a video. I stayed up to like five o'clock this morning mm -hmm. and I watched videos of uh, of the tallest buildings and uh, the, the biggest hotels and all the different things. And I was looking at some things even with Dubai because your 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 pulpit may not be the may not be in the church. Right. Your pulpit may be in the business sector. Your pulpit may be a book that you're supposed to write. Yes. You got to know why you got to know your why. And I was wow. I'm looking at uh, this book that we've just uh, not too long ago written. We just uh, let me see if I can find it for you. And uh, let me see if I can find it. We're going to find it. It's not going to take me long. But I'm saying this to say that I really believe that this, even the book that we're working on now to finalize, gives me my greatest pleasure because it was a book that we developed uh, just from our thought of why, of our process of why, of our understanding of why did God create us. And I'm still looking for it. Stick with me. Don't go anywhere. Stay right there. But there it is. There it is. It's, it's this, this book. And it really blessed me. My uh, wife, of course, always 
uh, we come up with these ideas and these creative ideas, but she said, she asked the question, do you know why? Answering the one question that will revolutionize your life. And when we thought about that, why did you, why were you born? Why have you had to go through what you had to go through? Why couldn't the enemy kill you? Why didn't you die in that accident? Why didn't you die of that sickness? Why couldn't you, uh, why is it that you've had to endure all that you've had to go through? And I believe a couple of answers are there. Number one, you were born for such a time as yes. this. Number two, you were born to be a global solutionist. Mm -hmm. Another video that I watched, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you here in just a moment. Now, this is going to bless you too. Uh, is there's a video that I was watching. Uh, uh oh, we're going to go. Uh, anyway, we, we, we're going to go to this other video and I'm trying to find it very quickly. Let me see if I can find it for you. There's a video I was watching just earlier. And uh, I'm going to show you this. I think this is going to bless somebody because sometimes you have, we have no clue the creativity or the other things that are in our life. Uh, skip the ad. There we go. Okay, watch this. Now, look at this. I had never seen this before. As much as I had been watching television pretty much all of my life, I've been watching this. And in Japan, there is this building. Now, I'm going to show you something because for some of you, your assignment, assignment is not just in the church. Check this out. It's real. There, I was watching right. this earlier. That building is a highway. There is a, a highway that goes Southwest through a building Japan's in Japan. Did you hear what I said? The There's somebody that created a highway that goes Asia through a building in Japan. And so I'm looking at this. It's easy to see why. And I'm like, my building God, level, the gate tower there is a, a highway place. that goes through the building. Now, I'm not going to watch much of it, but I want you to think about it. There's Maybe your assignment is to write that book. Right. Maybe your assignment is to write that screenplay. <laughs> You know, create something uh, in the earth. It's maybe going to change communities. Right, that's going to change, change something. Change nations, and, absolutely. And something is going to do something different than what other people have done. Yes, yes. You don't want to go back and do do the same thing everybody else has always mm -hmm. done. What is it that God has called you to create that nobody else can create? Yes. I was watching uh, this 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 video last night from uh, the the in Dubai, uh, the new Ferris wheel that they have, and I think it says it's gonna it's gonna have a hunt with a thousand like fourteen hundred people yeah, that's on a Ferris. Wheel, 1400. And you can have lunch and dinner on this Ferris wheel. So they got ready to create this new island and they had to bring people in. I think it was from, from some other place to be able to create this. And so they went and found these people who, who were engineers who had the ability to create the thing that they needed created. What is it that God has called you to create in the earth? Is it a tunnel through a building? Mm -hmm. Is it that you've been called for such a time as this to save much people alive? Are you a Joseph who has a testimony that you've been brought through all the places that you've been brought through for such a time as this so you can save much people alive? Are you an Esther who has been uh, isolated and, and, and taken through all that you've been taken through mm -hmm. so that this day you could realize your biggest suddenly, which is to know why you were created and why you were born? I want you to think about that. Absolutely. You know, I was just watching just the other day um, a story of a woman, and I think it might have been on Facebook, but she had been, um, she had contracted a disease. It's like a flesh eating bacteria. And so it really affected her body and she didn't have the means to get the real treatment that she, you know, wanted or perhaps needed, but God gave her a creative idea. And through that creative idea, she began to heal herself. There were things that she had to physically do to her body. And so because of that, she was able to help other people. Mm. Um, she, you know, she was able to go into the medical field, not having a medical degree but mm. she had wisdom she Come had on. knowledge that God had given to her and so now she's able to go in and work with athletes professional athletes mm. because she had to go through this process so she would know how to help other people yes and so again, I'm, there, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, there's, uh, there's, there's purpose even for your pain, right? The absolutely. Pain that we go through, there's purpose for it. some God wants to do something with your pain. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> when you look back at your life and you look at all that you've been through, mm -hmm. you gotta, you gotta look at that and you gotta go through that process and figure out why is it, what is it that I'm, I'm called to provide a solution yes. to 
who is it that I'm called to provide a solution to? Yes. You look back and you look, and let me tell you something. There were some things that I'm getting some books that we're getting ready to write mm -hmm. that, that, are, that were born out of our experience. Our mm -hmm. gladiator camps were born out of our experience in ministry. Our, uh, our book, uh, this is my suddenly season. It was born out of our experience in ministry. Our, right. our, our breakthrough oil, uh, our oil of consecration. Yes. All these things were born out of our experience in ministry. All the suddenly conferences were birthed by you as you said, we need you in this city or we need you in that city or we need you in that city. But our ability and capacity to minister was birthed out of our experiences, yes. the near death experience, the isolation, uh, the abandonment, the rejection, uh, the life of, of just being feeling separated and feeling as if though uh, people have thrown you away. It's what makes us want to get on here every day and encourage other people. Yes. Let me tell you something. You, if, if you don't understand your why, you won't, you won't be able to do what you, what you're called to do very mm -hmm. long. Mm -hmm. But when you know why you're called to do it yes. and you know why you've had to endure what you've had to endure, then you can yes. persevere and push. And you may, you may miss a few days, but you'll get right back up and keep right going back. because right you back. know why you were created. You know what Jesus. your purpose is. You yes. know your why behind your what. Amen. Absolutely. Purpose will always um, give you the stamina to endure. Purpose will cause you to get out of bed. Purpose will cause you to push another day. Purpose will cause you to um, to go forward, to, to finish the book, to start the business. Purpose will cause you to do that. And so many, uh, many of you, um, the enemy has fought your purpose. He has fought you tooth and nail. He has sent so many attacks against you, against your mind, against your family so that you will always stay focused on the issue and not focus on purpose. But God is calling you in this hour to focus on your purpose, to get in his face, to pursue God, because the more you pursue him, the more you will find yourself, the more he'll reveal who you really are and what you have been called to do, because everything that God has, has said about you is already on the inside of you. It's time for that thing to be activated so that you can walk in it. And in walking in it, it's going to bring provision. It's going to bring peace into your life. It's going to cause you to be blessed, but you're going to be a blessing to so many others because why? You are walking in purpose. That's right. The thing that you were created to do. It was yes. for this cause that you were born. You got to look at it. You got to think about it alive. to save much people alive. That's what that's what Joseph said. Joseph looked back at his pit. He mm -hmm. could have been bitter. He could have been upset with his brothers. But he said it would. He said I was born. He said and I went through what I went through. He said I'm not going to be bitter with you. you I'm not going to be upset evil. with you. Mm -hmm. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good that we could save much people <laughs> alive. So listen, yes. we want to we want to bless you guys. We want you to know that we love you. We want you to know that we appreciate. Yes. You. We want you to know that we thank God for you. Jesus. We want to thank God for every one of your God. experiences, every trial, every storm, everything you've been through in life, every good time, uh, every not so good time, everything that you've been through has been to bring you to this place. Yes. And we want you to look inside yourself and really figure out, okay, God, for what reason was I born? What reason, what was my purpose? What's my destiny? Mm -hmm. What's the thing that's locked up inside of me that the earth needs? Yes. I'm telling you, what's, what's the creative genius inside of you? Yes. Uh, what's the iPhone inside of you? What's the <laughs> Android inside of you? What's yes. the what's the computer inside of you? What book is inside of you? What road is inside of you? This road was created by an engineer who solved a problem that they needed to get that 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 road through this building and they knew uh and they don't they only had limited space so they couldn't go around and so they needed to take that road through somewhere that they could not because of the the density of the city and the fact that they needed to get people to a certain place so what's the thing that's inside yeah, of you what's the problem. solution what's mm -hmm. the answer to something that's inside of you and you you don't even really know it's there you don't even have a clue that that solution is there i'm telling you there is a creative dimension to you that you have not tapped into, that you have not, uh, that you have not, and I'm speaking to the DNA of your mind, the Jesus. DNA uh, of, of your of your history, the DNA yes. of your life, the DNA of your thought process, and I'm I'm challenging you, I'm pulling that thing out of you, I'm saying that there's something more in you than you even realize is yes. there, and so we speak to your mind, we speak to your spirit, we speak, uh, and we command it to leap, we command yes. uh, you to get into purpose, to get into destiny, to know why you were created, why you had to go through what you had to go 
through why did you have to endure you have to we can we decree all of those things that you are that you are gonna that you today you're gonna you're gonna find your your greatest suddenly ever you know we said this is just suddenly season the season where God uh, uh, does something suddenly abruptly immediately straightway without notice and I'm telling you today is a day that you're gonna wake up and realize that never Lord. before Thank this is Jesus. why I was born like Queen Esther yes. I showed you the video in the beginning if you just came on number one please share if number two if you just came on I want you to go back at the end of this and watch the beginning of it and mm -hmm. see uh, that video because you got to hear those words if what if you came into the kingdom for such a time such as this what if you were born for such a time as this I gave the the story, and I'm going to teach more on it about the different prophets and about the different apostles and the different people mm -hmm. that sometimes you've been born for just for this purpose. You've been born yes. to provide this solution. You've been born to speak this prophetic word. Jesus. You were born uh, to make a difference in the earth. You were born yes. to provide this solution. This is why you were born. And once you find that mm -hmm. can be the biggest suddenly of your life because I'm telling you, once you get that suddenly, all the rest of them are going to come into alignment. You won't have to pray about money. You won't have to pray about relationships. You'll attract the right people. You you want to pray about money. Money will be attracted to you. You won't yes. have to chase after favor. No, favor will be attracted to you. Uh, yes. People will open doors for you because they'll realize that you have the solution to the problems of their life. You got to know why you were born. Why were you isolated? Why did you go through what you've gone through? Why were you born? Why do you think the way you think? Why do you feel the way you feel? Why do you process things the way you process it? Why do you walk the way you walk? Why do you talk the way you talk? When you know that, you're going to know something Something about yourself that's going to produce great rewards and great solutions. And we know that, that, we, that we know that we know that we know that that's going to be one of the greatest suddenness of your life is to wake up one day mm -hmm. and realize why you were born. Amen. One of the things that I certainly want to leave with you today is that the enemy will always cause you to want to focus on your problem. But God wants you to focus on being a problem solver. Mm -hmm. And so whatever issue, whatever difficulty, whatever situation that you are facing or have faced in the past, I want you to look at that thing and say, how can I solve this issue? How mm -hmm. can I solve this problem so that it can bless someone else? That what you've gone through, what you've had to endure, your experience, how can what you have gone through be a blessing to someone else? When we look at the different um items and we look at the different systems um, of our world, um, of our nations, when we look at the different products, they all came about to meet a need because there was an issue in the world. There was a problem in the world and somebody's creativity solved that problem. And so God wants you to be, as my husband has said many times, God wants you to be a global solutionist, that you're able to solve problems, not just in the United States, not just in Europe and Asia, but to be a global solutionist, that you impact every facet of the world. And so God is giving that to you. He wants, and some of you are called to family. Some of you are called to women. Some of you are called to men. Some of you are called to government. Some of you are called to communities. And, and so whatever your call is, wherever God has purposed you to be and purposed you to do, then it's going to happen. You're going to do just that because there are people that God has assigned for you to bless, amen, and for you to empower, for you to equip, for you to um, create something that's going to revolutionize their life. And so it's the time, it's the season, it's the moment, it's your suddenly season because even as we said, this is the biggest suddenly of your life when you find out why you were born, why you could not die, why did God choose you and why did others reject you, why, you're, why are your gifts important? Why um, is it, why is is it that you can't quit? Why do you have to continue to press? Why has it been so difficult for you in life? Why has things not always come easy for you? And so. It has caused you how to be a fighter. It has caused you how to endure. That was the purpose of the assignment. That was the purpose of the pain. It is to push you into other places that you would not have gone to had you not had some opposition. 
And so opposition will cause you to press into another direction. Rejection sometimes reroutes you so that you can get to the place that God has already ordained because you got to know that your steps are ordered by the Lord. Amen. Because you are his, you belong to God. He loves you. He's already uh, prepared a plan for you. Your destiny is great. And so your steps have been ordered. There has been a process. There has been a method to the madness. Hallelujah. Because God is certainly in control. Wow. That's good. You know, we had a slight interruption on, um, on Periscope, but, um, we got back on there and I'm excited about what God is doing. Let me tell you something. We love you. We bless you. Yes. I always love to give this announcement about, uh, the webinar and, uh, kind of just share what my wife is, uh, is going to be doing. I think it's going to be a blessing. We're excited about us being on midday with Lejean and Valora and just yes. really finding uh, interesting topics and really even creating a new uh, system of being able to really minister to you and teach yes. you in a way that we had not before and uh, really excited about that. Uh, of course, we're having the Bold Prayer Warrior, Fearless Intercessor, uh, Prayers That Bring Breakthrough, online mm -hmm. webinar training. We're about two weeks out from that. Today is the 31st. Yes. And uh, let me tell you, this is the last day of August. We believe this is the last day of your new beginning. And I think we, we God saved this message for last. But to, tonight yes. starts a new month. And I'm excited about Ooh, this new month. Jesus. And so meet us tonight at Midnight Choir. Yes. And I believe that God's going to give us a word today for tonight. Uh, and then this webinar is going to be amazing. Go to www.lejeanvalora.com to register. Uh, then Shift Colorado, we're going to be there. Reset, some of you have seen these flyers before in Lima, Peru. And then Cast Out Conference, so September 22nd through the 24th mm -hmm. there in Tallahassee. Yes. Then um, Lake Wales, Florida, uh, suddenly 2K17, Lake Wales. I believe it's going to be an amazing time. October uh, 19th through the 21st. And then there's another meeting in South Africa the week, uh, the 15th through the 19th that we'll be attending. And then, uh, of course, the Women's International Conference, October 26th through the 28th. And then finally, of course, there's our flyer again. I'm excited about what God is doing. Are you excited? Absolutely. So, so excited because... Um, I'm, I'm learning more and more about my purpose and why have I have been called and why I was born but because for so many years I did not know wow. because I was told just the opposite of what God had purposed for my life and so I believe the lie instead of the truth and so once you believe the truth once you understand the truth it is the truth that makes you free amen so you become free in power you become free in the call of God that is upon your life. And so God wants us to be free in our minds and our emotions that we no longer believe the light of the enemy, that we no longer consider the things of our past. Amen. That they cannot, um, it cannot hinder us any longer. They cannot stop us any longer. I don't care what you went through. I don't care if you are a mass murderer. No, God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Redemption has come to you today. God has redeemed you from the curse of the law. He's redeemed you from sickness and poverty and spiritual death. He's calling you into purpose in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You, 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 your knees may be shaken, but you are a mighty man of valor. You are a woman of, of strength and empower in the name of Jesus. What God said, and he addresses you in your finished state, not where you were, not where you started, but he addresses you in your finished state because he know what he's already designed for you. You know, there is a, uh, there's a, when you thought about, when you said that, uh, theologically, <laughs> and sometimes, you know, I know y'all be like, man, where in the world did he get some of this stuff from? <laughs> but there is a word, um, and we, when we look at things, it's a word called teleologically. Mm -hmm. Now, we find it in the Bible, uh, the word teleos is uh, a Greek word, which means mature. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at things uh, from a place of uh, teleologically, what we see is, it's like looking through a telescope. Which means that when Jesus said, be ye mature as I'm mature, it doesn't mean that you're, you're sinless perfection, but it does mean that he sees you in your finished state. Right. And so we have to even learn how to see people in their finished state, mm -hmm. see them conform to the image of Jesus Christ. We are, we are made in his image, but it, sometimes it takes us a moment to realize who we really are. You remember uh, even Simba. You remember Simba. I love to talk about Simba, and I'm going to show that one day. Uh, Simba, matter of fact, we're gonna, I might show that this evening or tomorrow. You know, when Simba looks into the water and he realizes he's not a 
a monkey or a hyena. He realizes he's a lion right. and he finds his place in life. Sometimes we have to be like that. We got to realize <laughs> this is who I am. This is what yes. I was created to be and yes. take our rightful place. And so what you're saying is God looks at us in according uh, teleologically, according to what he had designed us for us to right. be, even if we're not operating in it right now. Right. And sometimes it's worse for human beings because as humans, we'll give up on each other when we don't see the finished product operating in each other. We'll give up on our marriage when I don't see you operating the way you don't see me operating the way that we thought this fairy tale marriage was going to mm -hmm. be. But then you say, you know what? I see who you're called to be. I see your destiny. I see your purpose. I read an article this morning and this article uh, I got it off LinkedIn. This woman found this man. Now, I don't, I don't know the fullness of the story, but I saw she, the, the, it was, the story was saying when she met him, he was homeless. She took him in, began to feed him, began to help him get his life together. And she said, the only thing I want you to do is work out and get stronger. That, that, that was 10 years ago. She said today she sat beside him in the audience as he made millions of dollars with whatever it is that he's created or started or developed. Jesus. And so I'm telling you that there are million My dollar God. ideas inside of yes. you. And today you got to get around people yes. who will develop and cultivate those ideas and not around small minded people who would diminish who you're called to be. Yes. I'm telling you, it was for such a time as this that you were born, that you were created, yes. but you got to get around see you tonight uh, for Midnight Cry. We believe it's going to be an amazing Midnight Cry. I'm not even sure what God's going to say and how he's going to say it, but I know it's going to be amazing. Woo! So we're looking yes. forward to it. We love you. Set we bless you. Arms. And we honor you. <laughs> and it's in Jesus' name that we do declare that this is, is. your suddenly season. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. We love you guys. Stay focused. Stay in purpose. Stay in, in, the, in where God has placed you because you're going to a greater place. You're going to higher heights and deeper depths in God. We love you guys. Bye-bye.